So I think one thing we've got to keep in mind is that while developing the manufacturing process in a compressed timeline, uh, Pfizer, Moderna, other manufacturers have not been able to do what we call as process intensification, which is being able to produce more doses through the same equipment. And so it is, uh, it is time that you know, we, we reflect back and do some of those activities, which will bring us up at a much higher level of capacity in a month and a half or two months time, but we have to uh, suffer a slight delay in, in, in some cases. I think that the crux of all of this then goes to not having sufficient manufacturing capacity. And this is also um, along the lines of what De Dr. Tedros was mentioning, that we need more manufacturing capacity both to work with the vaccination priorities we have outlined in Europe, North America, but also to be able to provide access to the vaccines to countries um, it, which are in the low and middle income category through the COVAX facility. So I think for both reasons, we do need more manufacturing capacity and any efforts which may um, require process intensification uh, are, are a welcome step. A number of contract manufacturers have stepped up. I mean, Lonza is one that we've spoken to here at uh, CNBC as well. Is that making a difference or do we need still more coordination across the board? So I think the fact that many manufacturers are using contract manufacturers is in a way uh, a boon because uh, it's very hard to reconfigure the manufacturing capacity that's in-house within a company and, and start using it for something else. So examples would be if a company had manufacturing capacity but does not have a successful vaccine yet, how can we reconfigure that capacity to start manufacturing either the drug substance or do fill and finish for those vaccines which have proven to be safe and efficacious and there is a growing market demand for them? And that reconfiguration becomes much easier when a contract manufacturer such as Lonza or Catalan or Emergent or Resifarm or Rovi or many of the companies which have uh, started doing this, uh, they can reconfigure their internal production suits much quickly uh, if needed. What do you think this is going to add to the overall time scale for a fulsome vaccination program in all countries that want the vaccines then? Because the um, announcement from Pfizer that they were having some issues and that they were going to have to reduce manufacturing to scale did cause some consternation. How much longer then does this process take if we've got these capacity constraints? So one is the, the temporary um, shortfall that you're, you're describing at Pfizer, and I think that will resolve itself once they've, re once they've intensified the process uh, and, and done the things within the plants. I think the, the bigger question is, would we have sufficient manufacturing capacity for fulfilling a global demand? And that's not just for the Pfizer, Moderna, and AstraZeneca uh, Oxford vaccines, but also for other vaccines that, are, that we are keenly awaiting trials for, such as the one from Johnson & Johnson and Janssen Pharmaceuticals. And I think the big question there will be, would manufacturers uh, do a scale up and scale up implying uh, using their own or contract manufacturers facilities alone, or will they also think about scale out models where they uh, transfer the technology to other manufacturers who can then provide um, not just manufacturing as a contract service, but manufacturing their own uh, for meeting demand, especially in developing countries. So I think that's um, unclear as to whether we'll see more scale-out models. In the absence of that, I think um, it, it probably is um, at least 18 months to 24 months before we'll start seeing enough manufacturing coming out to fulfill um, even um, a, a fraction of what we need globally.